If you have your <clears throat> Bibles this morning, please turn with me to the book of Psalms, Psalms 119. I want to read verses 9 through 16. Psalms 119. Beginning with verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statute. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Almighty God, how we thank you and how we praise you for this day in which you have given to us that we might come to worship you and praise you. This is the day that has been set aside to honor and glorify the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that we've come here for no other purpose but to worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us, Lord God, to get our eyes up off the things of this old earth and look full in your wonderful face. And when we do, the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Lord God, guide us, direct us, Help us to be faithful unto you in every aspect of our life, not only on coming to church and worshiping you, but all the days, wherever we go, whatever we might do. Help us, Lord God, to always stay in your wonderful, precious, holy word that we might be found faithful as this young man in doing your will and serving you. Thank you again, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Rob Bell, a pastor of Mars Hill Baptist Church in Upper Michigan, wrote a book some time ago about love. The name of the book, I think, was Love Wins. It's a book about heaven and hell. And the fate of every person who ever lived. It actually was number two on the bestsellers list. For Bell, oh, in this book, no one goes to hell. He says, because of God's love, God will save all people after their death. The Bible teaches, though, the hell for those who refuse Jesus. If you refuse to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, then your destination is hell. I don't suppose he read, you know, all of the Bible. Because the Bible teaches that unless you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you will go to that awful place. By the way, Lifeway refused to sell the book. I am so thankful for that. So today I want to talk to you about God's Word, conquering with God's Word, the Bible. Notice verse 11 here says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Don't want to sin against God? Well, then have the Word of God in your heart and in your life. Five things I want to share with you this morning to help us to truly understand what God's Word has to say 
First of all, we need to discover God's Word. Notice in verse 12, he says, O oh Lord, teach me thy statutes. The psalmist is asking God to teach him his word. Oh God, teach me your word. And we should do likewise. We must ask the Holy Spirit to teach us God's word. I'm skeptical, really, of people who say that I got it from such and such a book. Why not get it from God's Word? You know, uh, books are great. We need them. We should use them. But we need to understand that the Holy Spirit was instrumental in giving us God's Word to begin with, and He's the one that can teach you what God has to say to you. Stay with the Word of God. You know, we should know more about the, or he should know more about the Word of God than these people who are always writing about it. Now, yeah, it, it's true we need concordances and uh, reference books and all that. But we discover God's Word when we trust Him to reveal it to us through the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, dear friends, but when I talk to God, I want Him to explain to me what certain passages of Scripture are about. I'm not dependent on Jake and John and Joe or someone else to tell me what it is. I want God to tell me what it is. And that's what we need. First of all, we need to discover God's Word. The psalmist wanted to teach Him. Secondly, we need to digest God's Word. In verse 18, it says, Open my eyes, Lord, that I may behold the wondrous things out of your law. You know, uh, Webster tells us to digest something. It means to think it over and over and over. You observe it into your life. Well, we need to look at God's promises and study them and ponder them and absorb God's Word into our life until it really absorbs us. We are to be partakers of God's Word. We are to digest God's Word. Psalm 34, 8 says, test it. To see if it is good. Some people pay for a, read a verse of scripture and they zip through it and that's it and move on. They don't know or understand what it says. <clears throat> Absorb his word. Take it into your heart and life. Digest it. Make sure that you understand what God's word is all about. The third thing you notice, he says, he will delight in God's word. I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. <clears throat> Some people do not delight in God's word. You know, reading it is a duty to be performed. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'll study my Sunday school lesson, but... I'm not going to digest. I'm not going to really take it in my heart and life. I'll just read it enough in case the teacher asks me a question. I can answer it. No. Here again. Delight yourself in God's Word. Let it speak to you. Let it move you. Because that's what He wants to do. You see, the spiritual attitude... will bring spiritual lightning into your heart and in life. The lightning in God's Word enables us to be conquerors. <laughs> Christians who delight themselves in God's Word, oh, you know what? They love God's Word. They love it. They love God's Word, they obey God's Word, and they are victorious through God's Word. 
We have so many people today are like the man, that preacher who wrote the book. They want you to believe what they say. I want you to believe what God has to say. God's Word speaks to us. His Word. Obey God's Word. Then we'll be victorious in His Word. And we're able to claim His promises. And we can do that in praising His holy name. Fourth thing. Depend on God's Word. 119.89 tells us. It says, Forever thy word is settled in heaven. Forever. God's Word is settled in heaven. Many Christians, you see, don't depend on God's Word as they should. They rely on self-efforts. Other people. Other writers, <laughs> you know what? It's it's wonderful. Yes, it's wonderful to sit under a great preacher. It's wonderful to sit under a great teacher and neglect the word of God, and they fail miserably in doing that. If we listen, if we're ever going to be conquerors. We must depend upon God's Word. It must never fail. Have you ever noticed? I don't know where you've noticed it or not. But you listen to the news media. And we're being exposed to so much violence and so much sin. Our people, our leaders of our country are trying to get us to move away from what God's Word has to say. Groups are marching around. It's just a group down in Tampa marching around because Congress is voting they're going to do something about abortion and some of these things. Oh, many of these people who are doing that, my dear friends, are Christians. And they have moved away from the word of Almighty God. <laughs> you, you just think about it. Most of the things today that people are so upset about and all that, they moved away from the word of God. Oh, that we could get back to that day and time when people lived not according to what Congress said or what according to the president said our leaders had to say, but according to what the Word of God has to say. Amen. That's what we need. That's where we need. We need to discover God's Word. We need to delight in God's Word, absorb it, take it into our lives. You know, we need to depend upon God's Word. But last of all, somehow or another, we need to discover once again the power of God's Word. There's power. <coughs> power in the Word of God. Notice the Bible says that in Hebrews 4.12 that the Word of God is quick and powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts both ways, my friend. Yes, it has some good and wonderful things to say to us. But at the same time, I tell you, my dear friend, it speaks often of hell and the rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ will send you to that awful place. You know, the Word of God penetrates the heart. It penetrates the heart of a sinner. Sometimes just simply reading the Word of God penetrates your heart and will bring you to the cross and bring you to the Lord Jesus Christ and He will save you. It brings forgiveness to those who will repent 
and believe. Sometimes just simply reading the Word of God will do that. It has, and by the way, it, it has overcoming power too. This morning in the Sunday school lesson, Jesus overcame Satan through the power of God's Word. We must depend on God's Word to overcome the onslaught of the enemy today. And I'll say to you once again, if you don't think Satan is having a heyday, you just read your newspaper. You just listen to the news. Some father now is accused of killing his daughter, bearing her. Families are killing their children. Mothers are leaving them to starve or, or burn up in a car. What have you? All of these things. What in the world has happened to people? They've stopped reading God's Word. They stopped living by God's Word. Let me say to you again, dear friends, many Christians are moving right down the railroad track. They're going right along with Satan. You know. The Apostle Paul says we can become more than conquerors. How do we do it? We do it by staying in God's Word. Discovering it, digesting it, taking it into our heart and life. It's also wonder-working power. You know, you remember Peter? Peter, he's a fisherman. Jesus said to him, cast out your net. Peter said, nevertheless, he didn't want to do it. He said, nevertheless, thy word, I will let down the net. So he threw his net out there, and you know what happened, don't you? Two boats were filled with fish. <laughs> Luke 5, 5 tells you that. I want to say something to you this morning, dear friends. God's word is still with us today. You know what Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word, and my words abide in you, ask what you will, and it shall be done. Do you get that? His word abides in me. If his word abides in you, then you can ask what you will, and it shall be done. Problem? Problem, most Bibles are on the table. Or maybe not the table, but maybe can't even be found. Probably all of you come this morning, your Bible in hand to church. Let me ask you, how much how much time did you spend in it last week really reading it? As much time as you did in doing other things, reading other papers or whatever. Power in the Word of God. There's everlasting power in the Word of God, too. <coughs> you know what Matthew 24, 35 says? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall not pass away. Heaven and earth pass away. But my word will not pass away. You know something? A lot of talk today about nuclear power. You know what, dear friend? <laughs> Think about that. Nuclear power can't destroy God's word. Can't do it. Forever, O oh Lord, is thy word set in heaven. Oh, yeah. Forever.
power, discovering the power. Well, it's revealing power also. You know what? It's a designer of the thoughts and intent, intents of our hearts. God knows, listen to me, God knows your thoughts. He knows your intents. Think about that for just a moment with you. He knows the desire you are. He knows what you desire. Right now. Some of you sitting there and your desire is to get a Big Mac. <laughs> you know, go somewhere and do this or that. When I get out, as soon as that long-winded preacher gets over, I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to do this. No Big Mac. Remember the song she played. It could happen at any moment. What is the desire of your heart? He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. Oh, let me tell you once again. It is so wonderful, the Word of God. Stay in it, read it, meditate upon it. Let God speak to your heart. That's what He wants to do. But first of all, you've got to discover the Word of God. You've got to really sit down Study it, meditate, digest it in your heart and in your life. Then delight in it. Delight in God's Word. Read God's Word. Delight in it. Enjoy it. <laughs> uh, remember to depend upon God's Word in your life, in your home, whatever. Let's get back to the Word of God. Depend on it. Let it guide us and direct us. And remember, my friends, there is power in the Word of God. Power. People today, you know, they so educated and all this and try to get people to believe this and do that. I think of those pre-old time preachers up there in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, Appalachian Mountains. They couldn't read or write. But they could take the Word of God and present it to people and it would give their hearts and their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. They come to God. Oh, it's so important, dear friends, that we get back to the Word of God. But let me say this to you. If you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, well, you can study it all you want to. That's good. But hey, you need to give your heart, you need to give your life to, to Jesus and then the Holy Spirit that indwells you will help you understand this word. It'll help you to be what God wants you to be. Yeah. And then I tell you something, dear friend. If you're one of God's children and you read his word, you should delight in it. You should delight in His Word. Now, to become a child of God is very easy. Just simply admit that you're a sinner. You're a sinner. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. Believe. Believe that the Lord Jesus Christ left His strong glory, came down to this earth, went to a cruel, cruel cross and died on that cross for your sins and my sins. Confess your sins. Be open, be honest about it. Because he already knows the desire of your heart. He knows the thoughts of your mind. He knows all about you. Don't try to get away with something with God 
it won't work. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us, Lord God, to get back. Get back to your word to delight in it, to discover what it has to say to us. Spend time with the Holy Spirit. Let him direct our lives and help him to uh, or call on him to explain to us the scripture, what it has to say. And help us to realize that there is power in your word. Power. Wonder working power. Oh God, I pray this morning. If there's one here who has never truly given their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, that they would do that today. And for Christians, what we need more than anything is to get back to your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen.